you know a little bit about flipping denim tears right i saw this after to really see today and i kind of got a little bit mm, this is kind of lame right in my head about it and this is denim tears collaboration with this skateboard shop called neighbors in um i guess this is maybe la i'm assuming the skateboard shop right i'm not really i've not really heard too much about it or heard about it at all it's called neighbors and they're doing um this collaboration it's called african diaspora skate shop releasing online april 11th um, pop-up is going to be april 8th from 12 p.m to 7 p.m at neighbor skate shop and it features a t-shirt which this gentleman is wearing here that features the graphic that says tremaine can't skate now the funny thing about this is that on context you know just taking it on face value this t-shirt makes a lot of sense because recently tremaine was hired as the creative director of supreme and despite it being a really cool job and very covetable and something that was kind of surprising for me considering how new he's kind of in this space of kind of making clothes and being a fashiony type of guy right that he's kind of been able to have this sort of position says a lot about how he's viewed and rated by people in the industry that they think nah this guy's actually the truth that they're kind of given that position despite maybe us as customers and consumers only seeing one side of the thing that he does on the final product i'm sure there's other bits and pieces that he does without we see that contributed to his overall appeal the other part about it is that some people who are kind of you know supreme acolytes i guess were standing there and saying how is he going to be the creative director of supreme if he can't support if he can't skate and then you know some people like myself who've been buying supreme long enough would know that the majority of people that actually buy supreme don't know how to skate have never gripped up a skateboard don't know how to use a skate tool let alone how to push down you know how to push on a skateboard or ollie so the idea that someone that works at the company has to be able to skate is hilarious especially if you know who actually works there and you've seen them around and stuff you know a lot of the people that work there are just regular people who kind of do cool things but essentially they have no ties to the skateboard industry apart from the fact that they work for a pretty legit skate company but then my overly analytical um oh you wasn't there grumpy old man brain started to kick in and i was like this is kind of lame because it immediately reminded me of this old t-shirt um that was made time ago i think maybe 2007 or something by a brand called plain gravy that featured the graphic that said pharrell can't skate as featured here in this picture um with the legendary um skateboarder terry kennedy from back in the day right and this t-shirt i remember coming out and i remember having one actually that i purchased from my maybe i think maybe karma loop or something and the whole idea behind this was that pharrell was just popping up in the streetwear kind of scene he was kind of getting a bit of steam because of his early association with nigo because the funny thing is looking back right people will never believe this but there was a period in time where people in streetwear thought pharrell was lame because it felt like he kind of latched onto Nigo skate thing cause and those type of guys and he immediately got cool points because Nigo skate thing cause back in the day they were the dons they still are the dons but back then the early kind of 2000s period right where maybe a lot of people in the western world are kind of becoming hip to it was really a big deal because at that time Bape was still kind of underground it was really well done Nigo was still at the helm designing crazy shit spending way too much money on store design and interior and merchandise and packets of stuff to put the clothes in eventually kind of made him bankrupt but essentially that brand was sick and a lot of people felt like when Philip Ferrell was coming up he latched onto Bape and those kind of guys immediately got some cool guy points but he wasn't really of the culture or of the scene in the slightest then it got worse when he started to do his own brand that if I'm not mistaken skate thing who was a graphic designer kind of in-house for everything kind of nigo did back in those days he was helping him and nigo basically help pharrell set up baby nape so um billionaire boys club and his other brand ice cream which he kind of made shoes for and he had a skateboarding team for and that was around the time he was kind of be you know trying to be the skateboarding guy and a lot of people were like hold on you don't skate though we've seen you skate a bowl and you look horrible you don't skate in the slightest so him trying to align himself with skateboarding was kind of lame then he had that skateboarding team together that had really lame and corny skaters associated with it and a lot of the core skateboarding community who are really 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 about it were basically like no nah, we're not gonna jack that shit this guy can't skate he's not a part of the culture and this t-shirt was basically used to kind of mock him i remember at the time bobby hundreds writing a massive op-ed about it and kind of teasing him and making fun of him and just kind of eventually deriding him and i remember at the time too myself included and a few of my friends who kind of would buy loads of bape stuff at the being their boys club shop in no sorry at the busy workshop in flipping upper james street 
a lot of us were kind of into Bape way before Pharrell got into it. So when he started getting into it and he started to flip and popularize it in mod in popular culture, it started to be really annoying because suddenly all the stuff that you could buy easily was selling out now because everybody was basically buying it. So it's mad to think that now because kids would just see Pharrell as being the ultimate core guy. But there was a time when I was growing up where we thought Pharrell was lame and that he was catting and he was trying to beg and trying to get involved in a scene that he had no no history and no part of and no legitimacy to so the kind of layers to the pharrell can't skate t-shirt are there and they're ready and obviously um denim tears has taken you know some inspiration from it because terrain was around the time that i was flipping buying all this shit as well even though he's way he's way older than me but still he was around at that sort of time so i'm sure that's where the idea comes from but i think it kind of resonates more with it being Pharrell than it would do with a Tremaine thing, even though I'm sure the kids have said the same thing about him. But then, then I think about it over and I think to myself, am I just being that guy, the kind of the old guy shouting at the at the cloud? And am I being kind of overly critical, um, you know, censorious and just fault finding and overall because I was there and you kind of feel like just because you're there, your experience matters the most because essentially this capsule collection that he's doing with his shop looks pretty cool the shop itself is like a black owned skate shop which there probably isn't a lot in the world i know when i used to skate coming up right um you know i first started skating when i was maybe 13 14 or something and i remember at the time there was not really many people out there that looked like me um who legitimately kind of were into skateboarding especially people from ends i think there was a particular type of skate person who's into skateboarding who maybe were a palace later on down the line right but those are the kind of skate you know black guys that were kind of from labrook grove and shit you know that kind of shit they're not really you know what i mean they're not really from ends so a lot of that kind of vision of a person that was from end to skate it didn't really exist so when i was first skating getting into it you'd kind of get laughed at people think you're trying to be white and shit it was kind of a hard thing to kind of grow up in and kind of you know live with it's just really difficult so um maybe part of that kind of growing up has maybe tainted my view on things and i can come across a little bit weird and talking about this sort of stuff but when you actually look at it on face value on just a surface level it does look pretty cool right it's a black owned skate shop they've created this little capsule collection with denim tears and it's a pretty decent collection overall you've got some pretty nice t-shirts with some nice cool graphics on them you've got a nice trucker hat um you know that he's kind of famous for a good hoodie and a couple of skate decks like you can't get anything wrong than that and i think if you look at the actual promotional video that i found here talking about the skate shop itself you'll see that actually maybe my overly critical eye on this was kind of a little bit you know uh i kind of maybe went a bit too over the top with it because maybe this is actually quite a good thing and it's going to do quite a lot of good for the kids coming up that they kind of see this you know what i mean like especially at the highest level being created because it may be able to inspire them to do cool interesting things so this is a video taken from goal supply an interview with neighbors skate shop and it kind of features the people behind the skate shop and talking about the part it plays in the community and overall so you can imagine how cool this collaboration is going to look you know aligned with denim tears and what they do so let's play this video Lamert Park has so many young black skaters, young black brown skaters, where it's just like the skate shop is going it, to, it provides like an epicenter for, for the scene to start in this area of the city. Because like that's really what skate parks, skate shops are. Like they're so important. Like if anybody, like from any news organization were to like go to a city and try and figure out the different, go to different areas that kind of speak on the culture of what a city has to offer. If it has a skate shop, go there. I mean, we have such an honest, people tell us a lot of how authentic the project is and just like the, that, that aspect of authenticity. And like we, we always have such a high meter of that, but I feel like it's not really anything that we're like really striving to do, you know? We just were specifically speaking to the kids that skate in Lamert Park and we're allowing everybody to attach their subject position to that, you know? So it's like it can never be any different as long as we know that's who we're speaking to, and it's just it just it's just natural. It's natural, you know? yeah. Exactly. So it wasn't hard because it's like black people in skateboarding, you know, black yeah. bodies in skateboarding. There's so much that hasn't been spoken about yet. There's so much that isn't there. I feel like we definitely had like something to offer to the industry as a whole to give like a bit of a voice to you know a corner that doesn't. Right. And the skating industry knows much. that. Yeah. That's why we've had like we've gotten a lot of recognition, a lot of love. Yeah, we really a lot of support. Something that someone could have been. It's done. been. It's, it's, it's just been done. lacking. It could have been done. It could have been. You know been. What I'm saying I talk about it all the time. Like yo, yeah. like what's it? It's a ton of skaters that are in position that could have done it and do it. So I feel like that's that's another affirmation for me. 
But them saying like, yo, we just gonna wait up because we yeah. just waiting on neighbors. So yeah. it's like I'm cool, like <laughs> I'm cool with that. Yeah. I'm cool that nobody did it. Like yeah. at least like that. Facts. People that are black that don't skate gotta understand that the skate world isn't racist. Like they're not prejudiced against us. It's like, bro, I've I've had some of the coolest white friends growing up, and it's because skateboarding was the conduit to that. You know what I'm saying? Like I know if I was growing up in the hood and I didn't skate, I wouldn't have met a lot of white dudes or. Mexicans or anybody else, you know, but skateboarding, it's, we don't see color, we're yeah. just we're skating, we're hanging out, yeah. so that was cool, like, listening That's to rock and listening to different shit, because yeah. skateboarding was like, you know, there's no rules, it's not like, oh, you're weird, or, yeah. it's, you, you're yourself, and you're accepted, yeah. and, and then that, you live by the rules of Anyway, you get the point. Um, good to see, amazing to check out, actually, and I'm actually, um, you know, quite on the collaboration i think it looks cool uh maybe the t-shirt could have been left behind i feel like that legendary plain gravy for a can skate t-shirt should go into the flipping streetwear hall of fame and maybe redoing it in a new way in a contemporary way is a little bit lame and probably should be kind of left alone but still when you kind of relate to the skate shop itself the story it's trying to tell the people it's representing what denim tears is all about i feel that story is kind of congruent and makes a lot of sense and obviously it does actually look kind of cool so i'm pretty sure this is going to do well um check it out if you're not interested releasing april 11th online in that regard check it out check it out okay check it out if not don't but still check it out because i think it's good to support the the brothers support the brothers